Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show all of you how you can do a simple side-by-side -side effect comparison inside of DaVinci Resolve 17. So first I'll show you the effect where we have two copies of the video, one overlaying the other, and both of them are still stretched out to the full width of our video frame. So I'm going to take our base clip in video track one, and I'm going to copy it and paste it. So I'll go over here a little bit, control V to paste it into video track one again, and now I'll pull it up here to video track two and all the way to the left. Now, if you're copying the clip, which has already been edited with your effects and you just pasted it in, uh, then you may need to get rid of all of the effects for the secondary clip. So you could right click and go to reset fusion composition if you did your effects over there, or you can simply go to the inspector and the effects tab if the effects you were using were just brought in over from the effects library. Another alternative is you could bring in a copy of the original clip from your media pool onto the timeline. Either way, you need to end up with one clip that has the effects and one that doesn't. So since I haven't actually added any effects yet, I'm going to add the effects to video track two, and then video track one will just be the base underlying clip. So in the effects library, let's just add a couple of effects that we can use to demo. So in open effects, I will come down here and we'll do edge detect as something that's just gonna stand out a lot, as you can see. And I'll also go up here and throw in a zoom blur. Since we have a lot of motorcycle animation here, I think that could be kind of cool. So let's just go ahead and play with the zoom blur a little bit, maybe adjust the position of it to be a little lower on the screen, and then lower the amount so that it's not so extreme, and a little bit of center exclusion to make the center area a little bit more like the original, removing it from the zoom blur effect. So let's say that this is the effect we wanted to show off. If I hide video track two for a second, we'll see the original. So we have the two clips that we want to compare side by side. So the super easy way to do this is going to be to use cropping. So I can crop left from the top clip in order to reveal part of the original clip. So if we set this up with a simple animation, we'll end up with a pretty cool side by side effect. So let's go about one second into the timeline. And I'm going to pull the crop left in about 50% here. We could actually just type in the exact pixels if we know what we need it to be. So assuming that we have a 1920 pixel width in the timeline, if we divide that by two, then I think we're gonna get 960. So let's keyframe it right there. And there we have the side-by-side -side split, but let's go to the first frame here. And now let's either push the crop all the way to the right, if we want to show the original before we show the modified effect, or we can have the crop all the way at the left if we want to show the modified before we split and show half of the original. So I'll go back to the start and hit play here, and we'll get that little slide in animation from the top clip. So now we have our 50-50 split. So at this point, we could also add some extra stuff to the screen. So for instance, if we want to add a title, we could drag something like this in here, bring it to the bottom left, put in text for before, make a copy and say after, position it on the right side of the screen. And if you want, you can animate the two titles. A couple more things you could consider adding down the middle. If you don't like this hard edge with the cropping, you could add in a little bit of softness and then you could bring back the crop left a few pixels so that it's centered once again. Or as an alternative to that, if you want a even more obvious divider, you could add in a white line that goes down the middle. So to do that, I could add in a simple fusion composition layer here. So I'll just put this above on video track five. It's just a blank clip and we can go into the fusion editor and add in that white vertical line. So we do it using vector shapes. I'll do right click, add tool, shape, rectangle, and then right click, add tool, shape, render. We connect rectangle to render, render to media out. And now we just need to shape this rectangle. So that goes all the way down the middle of the screen. So let's shrink the width dramatically, increase the height. Okay, now if we go back over to the other page, we can see roughly how it's gonna look. I would say it's still a little wide, so I'm going to shrink the width further and we'll go back over to the edit page. OK, looking good. OK, so now to animate this little white line onto the screen. So we'll use crop top at the first frame. I want it to be all the way cropped here at the bottom. So let's keyframe it there with the maximum value. Go a few frames in and we'll remove all of the crop top. Now, if we 
play it back or hit space, we should get a little animation where our white bar goes from the bottom to the top of the screen. So something like that could serve as an alternative divider. So now as an alternative way that we can represent these two clips, I'm going to take these two, I'm going to hit control C and we're going to copy them and then we're going to paste them over here on the right and we'll kind of redo this a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these two clips and put them in little boxes so we won't need cropping anymore because we're going to shrink the actual video frames. So on the top clip, I am selecting this new copied top clip. I'm going to just reset all of the cropping. Now, when we affect the zoom and position of the clip and the timeline, if our effects are still active, we haven't rendered to a finalized version of the video clip, then we may need to change some of the settings in here to make sure that it still looks exactly how it does right now as we change the zoom and the position. So what you might want to do is render this edited video clip out and then bring it back in for the side by side comparison. And when you render it out, everything is finalized. So you won't need to worry about those other settings that you would otherwise need to change. So for instance, let me show you one thing that might happen. If I lower the zoom here with that zoom blur, you can see that the zoom blur still treats the video frame as if it is the full size. So as I lower the zoom here and everything's closer to that center, the zoom blur doesn't affect it like it should. So it's a good idea if you actually go out and render it out. So I'll just render this little bit. I'll just select this portion of the video footage and let's go ahead and get that rendered. OK, so now we can just go ahead and take this rendered copy, pop it into the timeline, and I'm going to use that to replace this bit. So now we have the advantage when I lower the zoom the zoom blur is still going to work exactly how it did before. Also, if I adjust the position, as we're going to do now, pulling it over here, a few hundred pixels, all the effects stay the same because all of our effects were already finalized. So I'm going to take the zoom and set it to 0 0.4 and let's set the position X as 500. So now we just do the same with the other clip. I'm going to take the zoom and set it to 0.4 and the position will be negative 500 so that it's on the left side. Now we can basically take our titles, copy and paste them over here. And now we have our before and after. So let's position this again, wherever we need it to be. In this case, maybe I'd put it right below and let's get this one up there. So now we can go ahead and hit play. And here is our second before and after side by side comparison effect inside of Resolve 17. So that's pretty much going to be it for this video showing you two ways to do before and after side by side comparisons of your video clips inside of DaVinci Resolve 17. I hope all of you learned something from this video. I've been Chris. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my future video content.